Hey everybody, Rosemutter here, and welcome to part 9 of my Dank and Ropa, another Let's Play. Last episode, uh, a new motive was introduced. So, Monokuma showed all of the students, I guess, like, what they most desire, what they want most. I guess it's kind of an incentive to get them to kill. So, whenever a motive is introduced, that means we're probably going to be having another murder soon. So, I imagine we're going to have somebody else dead. Uh, so... I guess we'll find out who's soon. Uh, let's get back into it. Let's see what happens next. All right, so I figured I'd hang out with Haru again because I have another one of the um, items that he would like. That is the Legendary Red Book. What's this? A gift? Um, I just happened to get this thing. Sorry if I gave you something random. Let's see. Eh? This is... This is the Legendary Red Book that was banned from sale in a week because the level of content was too high. Yuki, you bastard. Where the hell did you find this? I didn't get it because I wanted it, so I'm giving it to you. Dude, you're a kid. You know everything, man. Are you really giving me this? <laughs> Is that supposed to be a compliment? Like, dude, you're a kid. Maybe it's supposed to be like, you're the man. Seeing this is every man's dream. Oh yeah, well I'm glad you're happy, so then enjoy yourself. Oh, I think he will enjoy himself. I'm glad everything turned out okay. This <laughs> suspicious USB, what could possibly be on that? I mean, uh, Yuki already got his uh, taste of something lewd earlier with the uh, thing that's apparently that he he desires most. Oh, Kurokawa. Did you say to be wary today? Is it alright to move now? Yes. Oh, thank god. But you came out of your room after a long time, so it's already late this night. I guess you'll have to go back in. Yeah. Are you going to the dormitory? Let's go together. I'm about to go back right now. Yes. That's awkward. Even though her response has been notable, she's like a kid who doesn't speak any more than she should, compared to the general public. Oh, that's right. Hey, Kurokawa, the secret note that was the last motive, that was also a mix of lies, right? Another reason I'm convinced, the ridiculous note that I know the mastermind is a lie is because of your note. Oh, uh, right. I'm sorry about opening the note. I was really curious about it. You probably won't forgive me after saying to stop us. I'm really sorry. The details don't really matter. You sure? Then can you tell me if it's okay? You seem to know best if the note is a lie or not. Well, of course, if you don't have to talk, if you don't like it, it's probably a lie if I ask someone else if they know about me. I wouldn't talk about it. That note is... Oh... Kurokawa? What is it? My head. It hurts again. Don't worry about it. After all, it would be better to take a break in your room today. Now, let's get in quickly. You don't need to talk today. Yeah. Maybe she's, like, trying to remember... The memories that have been wiped from our mind and it hurts her head? Huh? What are they doing? Oh, what? What's going on here? Why is someone screaming? I feel like this is just like, we think it's going to be something bad, but it's actually not. Maybe it's a game or something. Kurokawa, damn, what happened? I have to check. Are we going to be, we're not going to be having a murder already. No way. Whoa, she's bleeding. Tyra, what's going on? Is that blood? Black and, oh shit. Maeda, Kurokawa, don't be dazed. Tyra, stop. Is she, like, hurting herself? Calling herself the Blackened? Let me go. Oh, shit. What happened? Wake up already. Tyra, she's- Oh, God, she slit her wrist with scissors. 
Well, never mind, it's not a game like I thought. What? You try to kill yourself? I'm going to die. Trash like me must die. I want to die. Don't disturb me. Well, here's the problem with that, because uh, we have had somebody in Danganronpa that took their own life, but because they killed themselves, they would still be considered the blockage, right? And if we don't figure out that she's the one who, who killed herself, we'd all die. So I feel like she'd have to leave a note being like, I'm the one who, who did it. Um, so, you know, but then that itself could be like, we might think that that's a lie. I don't know. This is just, this is all sorts of messed up. What kind of strength is this? Let go, Maeda, let go of me. Take it easy. Why are you doing this? Why are you trying to kill yourself, Tyra? This is an interesting change of pace, though. Like, she's kind of our sidekick, and she's lost her mind during this. Usually the sidekick is the one who's kind of like the, the one who is the voice of reason. Uh, that's not the case with this one. So I'm glad they're kind of doing their own thing now. It was following the Dankenropa, at least the first game. They were following it pretty closely, but now it's a little different. I, th I feel like this is if, if Sayaka had stuck around. This is what she might have ended up doing, just losing her mind more and more the longer she's here. I'm going to Ayami-chan's side. You knew that girl for like, <laughs> what, a week? What? Granted, I mean, I know you can have, especially in a situation like this where it's like a traumatic experience that you can form very close bonds, but wow. I have to go to Ayami-chan and apologize. I just can't be alive anymore. Don't be ridiculous. It's been four days since Hitano died. What are you saying? I saw Ayami-chan in the video yesterday. Oh, she was blaming me. Ayami-chan died because of me. Uh-oh, she wasn't supposed to talk about it. Is she going to get punished for that? Hitano appeared in her Desire video? Stupid Monokuma. They're trying to play with us like this. Calm down, Tyra. There's no way Hatano blames you. That video was manipulated by Monokuma. No, Ayami-chan is blaming me. She said even if I die, she wouldn't forgive me. I have to go to the other side and apologize to Ayami-chan. There's no other way. Damn it. It doesn't work no matter what I say. She's completely ruined. What should I do in this situation? Maeda. Move away. Oh, maybe she can, like... She'll be like, I will talk to Ayami. Wake up, Akane, Taira. Don't you know why Hatano died? Hatano's last words? The words she delivered to you. You remember them, right? Last words? I want you to live. You do not understand the meaning of those last words she left to you at all. Hatano died to save you, but if you commit the act you're about to, what do you believe that means to Hatano? After talking about this, are you still in conflict? Was this the kind person you always were? Tell me, Akane Taira. Mikako-chan. Akane Taira is not that kind of person. You are... you are so much more. Taira. Hey, she can... That was, I feel like, the most we've heard out of her since we started. Mikako-chan? Ugh. Kurokawa? Mikako-chan, what's wrong? Wake up! Why did she collapse? We've got to get her out of here. Come to think of it, she said she wasn't feeling well today. Don't you think this happened because she was pushing herself again? Anyway, let's move Mikako-chan to her private dorm as soon as possible. Maybe let's... I was going to say, it wouldn't be a good idea to get the doctor. The, okay. Suddenly, Kurokawa collapsed. We left Hyra behind and we put Kurokawa back on her private bedroom. Hey, guys. I'm so sorry. I guess I was out of my mind. How Ayami-chan saved my life? I was trying to throw it away. That's not enough. I even bothered you guys, too. I'm really sorry for being such a burden to everyone. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Tyra, because everybody understands your feelings. That's right. I could have killed myself, too. Wow. What's said with a happy face? You idiot. How is that comforting? That was pretty scary. Don't do that again. Hey, what about before? You said we shouldn't say what we saw in our motives. Is it okay now? It doesn't seem like anything, though. I don't think we should worry too much. That's right. Even so, everybody who aren't here will be happy to see our grown-up Tyra. I'm really sorry, and thank you. And, um, it's already been four days. Maybe it's too late. But I'll try hard again. I hope you can all accept me once again. Of course. Nobody blames you, so don't worry. Hi, this is a school announcement. It is now 10 p.m., which means nighttime has begun. Soon the restaurant will be locked for the rest of the day. Have good dreams and a good night. Oh, time's already slipped by? 
I'm sorry, I wasted your time for nothing. Tyra, you don't need to keep apologizing, okay? It's not like you at all. You're not such a timid girl. I mean, the Akane Tyra that we know is positive, and she always had a bright face, too. Oh, alright. Okay, hey guys, it's already nighttime, so let's go to bed now. Agreed. I'm a little anxious because of the motives, but we can all gather tomorrow, uh, together tomorrow to talk. Let's call everybody, even Kinjo, Makaru, and Uhara. Yeah, Satsuki's feeling a little sleepy. Okay, everybody have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow. When's the murder gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? It's been four- so now we know it's been four days since the last class trial, so I feel like we're bound for one soon. Tyra finally made up her mind. Her guilt and regrets for Hatana will not be forgotten in her memory for a lifetime. So she seems like whenever somebody seems to be having a turnaround, like that whole thing with, uh, with the cheerleader, uh, with Kazuna, and, uh, and, you know, they had, like, that moment, and then she died not too long after. So we have this moment where, like, Akane is kind of like, she's back on track now. Things are starting to look up, which means something horrible is going to happen soon. <laughs> Still, even so, Tyra is trying to move forward. That kind of action can never be done if you're on your own. But because she's with everyone, she was able to regain her spirit. All right, let's go to bed early today. Fortunately, it's not too late because the murder didn't happen after the motive came out as usual. Oh, you are just tempting fate, my dude. Even if it's difficult for tomorrow, we'll all get our spirit back little by little. I wonder if Kurokawa will be all right. I guess we'll know to at tomorrow's breakfast. Is she gonna die? I hope not. Makako's finally having some like character development, but because there's been so much attention put on her, I have a bad feeling. Today, I'm getting sleepy. Before we parted, I briefly explained to Tyra about Hatano's post-class trial. Let's sleep peacefully tonight. Oh right, about Kurokawa's secret note. Mikaka Kurokawa may actually be talkative. We're, I feel like we're gonna she's gonna die before we find out more about that. Maybe that's maybe it is true. Night. I'm relieved Tyra managed to wake herself up from her mind. Of course, this is not the end yet. The fact we're in Hope's Peak Academy has not changed. We have to find a way out somehow. And with those thoughts, I fell asleep fast. Hello, you guys. It's morning, 7 o'clock. Wake up time. Let's have a lively day today. Or, today too. Bleh. Morning. First, let's go to the dining room. I'll be with him and breakfast this morning. All right, I'm just like, who's not here? Uh, not a lot of people right now. Hello. Maidakun, hello. You've arrived early. In the dining room, there was a bright Tyra smiling. Yeah, did you guys sleep well? Maybe it's because Tyra's getting lively again, but I'm feeling way better than yesterday. I'm always happy here. I wonder what's up with the others. They haven't come yet. Did Maedika come too soon? It's still only 7.10. Is that so? Well, let's wait until we all gather together. Oh boy, it's always hard to wake up early in the morning. Kobushikawa- uh, kun good morning. Tyra, all right, you feel all better now. Akane Tyra feels like she got a complete resurrection, huh? It's gotta be. Seeing your bright smile and starting the day like this, it gives you a lot of energy. That's a complete black heart. It's not. All I'm saying is I'm happy my colleague returned to normal is all. The other guys aren't here yet? Yeah, but it is a little bit different. Kanata-chan was always at the restaurant before me. Oh no, don't let anything happen to that sweet doctor. I really like her. Even the others will be happy to see Tyra smile once more. Oh yeah, today I have a suggestion for you guys. I'll say it once again, once everybody comes. Suggestion? Yeah, after breakfast, Kinjo, Makaru, and Ohara will gather together to discuss with us. A meeting? About what? I don't really like those other guys. Well, when Maki was still alive, Kinjo gathered everybody and made an intermediate report. This time, the motives already came out, so I'd like to gather everybody for opinions. Oh, I see. Maeda-kun, that's amazing. I recall Kinjo doing those meetings. I haven't seen that in a hot minute. That's because not long ago, he was neglected by saying things nobody supported. But we can't do that anymore. It's all in the past, isn't it? I mean, we believe in Maeda now. Well, it certainly seems Tyra has regained some vitality in her eyes. Since we have such a bright person like her, it must have conveyed onto everybody that positivity. Ah, uh, someone's gonna be dead. By the way, it's getting late for the others. There's like a lot of people missing. Um, what time is it now? Around 
Is this simply over worrying? I mean, they're human, so there may be times that this could happen, but what's this anxiety? Let's wait a bit more patiently. I'm sure they'll be here soon. Yeah, okay. Like, there's a lot of people missing. It could be any number of people. No, this is absolutely not over worrying. Even if I'm wrong, something's not right. Everyone in the dining room gradually began to notice. It's getting late. It's already eight o'clock. What in the world happened? Let's stay still for a moment. Who isn't here yet? Kinjo, Makaru, Uhara, Kurokawa, Yamaguchi, and Inori. You don't have to mention Kinjo. <laughs> it's already 8 a.m. and nobody's come yet. I'm sorry for being late. Okay, so she's alive. That's good. Mikako-chan, is your health okay? Yes, but it's been a while. I was too late. I'm sorry. Kurokawa, have you seen anyone besides us when you came here? What happened here? Mikako-chan, don't you think it's weird? You came this late, but we're the only ones that arrived at the dining room. Hey, is it okay if we keep waiting like this? Something seems off. Isn't it better if we go and find the others? Yeah, I agree. We should look. Yeah, then let's start by looking for Yamaguchi and Inori first. Somehow, this feeling, it's like, it feels like, it's a feeling that seems like everything is already too late. It's because you just had to say out loud, be like, hmm, well, no motive, you know, the motives have happened, and yet nobody's died yet. Inori, are you inside? If you are, please answer me. I like both the lawyer and the doctor, so I really hope in the two of them. Okay, I, Kinjo is not gonna die. So he's probably safe. Um, I feel like Makaru, she's like too much of a antagonist that they're they're not gonna get rid of her because she provides like some conflict. So I feel like she's safe too. But then you have like safe characters, nice characters like Yamaguchi and Inori and uh, the priest. So I'm I'm a little worried about them. This is weird. Yamaguchi's silent too. Are we gonna have a double murder on our hands? Because doesn't that usually happen with the third case? Isn't it usually two people dead? Uh, I'm nervous. I don't think both of them are in their rooms. And those two are part of our group, so... <coughs> it would make sense for, like, the priest and and um, and Kinjo and Makaro to not be, uh, like, going to breakfast with us. But for my two faves in that group, that's sus. Where do they go after- uh, where do they even go at this time? If it's not in the dormitory, let's check the school. I think it's best to hurry. I have a bad feeling that- that, um, Yamaguchi and Inori are dead. Yeah, Korka was right. Guys, let's go find them on the school side. I tried not to let this anxiety get over myself and decided to stay calm and look for them in the school with everybody. Oh boy, alright. I guess I'm- so- I'm gonna check the third floor because usually whenever, uh, you know, whenever something opens up, like a new floor opens up, that's where the murder's gonna happen. There seems to be nobody on the first floor. I think it'd be better to go to the second floor. Yeah, I already knew that, but... Alright. Oh, wrong way. I heard someone screaming on the second floor. Was Satsuki wrong? Wow, you say that so casually. Somebody was screaming. Oh, oh! Okay, so he's alive. Uhara, wake up. Because we have three people who found him and no body discovery announcement. Uhara, how did this happen? Maeda, I don't know myself. I came to the second floor and Uhara was down on the floor like this. What's all this? Wah, Uhara, you're dead? He's still breathing. Ugh. Uhara, are you okay? This is... what happened to me? Hey, Uhara, what happened to you? I mean, he's he's asking that too. Why'd you get hurt like this? I was definitely heading to the library at night. Does anyone know what time it is now? It's been roughly... I think it's around 8.15. uhara can let's wipe this blood off. Here's a handkerchief. Thank you. By the way, Tyra, it seems you're getting better. Are you okay now? Uh, yes. Thanks to the others, I made up my mind. Somehow. We can talk about that later. More importantly, what the hell happened here? Uhara, who did this to you? I'm sorry, I don't know either. I remember walking toward the library at night, but suddenly I felt a pain in my head from behind. I can't remember. That means somebody attacked Uhara. Well, I guess, but attacking like this is enough to stun someone. It doesn't mean a kill. 
Yeah, this wasn't a kill attempt, but this could mean a tragedy is about to happen again, or has already happened. A motive breaks someone's mind and enforces the worst act to try to commit a murder. Wait, where are the others? Where's Kinjo, Makaru, Inori, and Yamaguchi? Oh, shit. What? That sounds like... I heard it on the third floor, of course. The third floor? Something else happened upstairs? Damn it, what should I do? I haven't properly checked the whole second floor, and I'm worried about Ahara's condition. You guys, are you looking for the others who didn't arrive at morning's breakfast? Yeah, I'm not sure about Kinjo, but we can't see Inori or Yamaguchi. And nothing about Rei, huh? Nobody cares about her. What happened? Maybe it has something to do with the sound on the third floor? I'll help you guys, too. Please, let me join your search. But Ohara, aren't you hurt? Will your body handle it? See, unless we have... Because, like, he was bleeding from the front. He said he got attacked from behind. Now the whole thing with, like, Ayame has made me think that, like, if somebody's hurt during a potential murder, that they might be the culprit and they're just trying to kind of, like, put the attention off of them to be like, well, I got hurt during this. I've been knocked out since last night. I have no idea what's happening. But I feel like it'd be pretty dumb to do that right after a class trial where somebody did that, where they hurt themselves on purpose. This degree won't be an issue. It's just a slight bump on the back of my head. Okay, so he does have a bump on the back of his head. That's not a problem. Oh, you said you didn't see Inori. In that case, I need Inori's ability to get the appropriate treatment. She is so dead. She is so dead. My sweet little bean of a doctor is so dead. So finding her remains, the same objective. And I bet big, big bean Yamaguchi is also dead. That's true. Maybe somebody's like locked up? What the hell is that noise? It's terrifying. I don't know what it is, but I think we should move quickly. Then let's divide into two groups. One group will investigate the third floor. The other will investigate the second floor. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Then I'll stay in the second floor and investigate. I want to go to third floor because you know that's where the murder happened. I'll stay in the second floor. I'm kind of like scared of that sound or whatever it is. <laughs> You're so brave. Then I'll be in the third floor group. I'll stay on the second floor. The second floor is wider than the third, so wouldn't it need more people? Then I'll stay on the second floor. You! You! Oh my gosh. You guys just don't want to- Like, you guys are afraid. That's why you're all just like, uh, we're gonna stay on the floor where the scary sound's not happening. I'll stay on the second floor, too. Then the rest are going to the third floor with me and Ohara. Maeda, come to the third floor with us. I didn't get to say anything, but I felt pretty determined. Well, it doesn't matter. Now, somehow, we have to quickly secure everybody's status on each room and identify who attacked Ohara. If it's decided, then let's move. I feel uneasy about something. If you find the others, come down and let us know. Be careful, everybody. I decided to go to the third floor with Kurokawa and Uhara following along. I mean, I didn't really have a choice. I like, I decided more of, like I was kind of forced into it. Come into the third floor. See from here clearly, it's in the art room. It certainly is. So what are we doing? In addition to the art room, I'll have to do a survey elsewhere. Did something, like, get locked in the locker and they're banging on it? Then shall we act separately here? I'll take a look into the art room. You guys have a look somewhere else. I mean, Makako also was late, so she could be suspicious, but she seems to always be late. And she's always suspicious, because she's always late. But she's been acting weird lately. I don't want to say that she's the murderer because of that, but... It doesn't matter, but be careful. Maybe the person who attacked me could be here. Honestly, I don't want to believe it, that it's one of us, but we already experienced it twice. The people you've been living with, they try to kill each other. I'll be okay, just check what that sound is. Now, let's move. The origin of the sound is here. It seems nobody's found it yet. Well, let's find out what that sound is. Yeah, it's definitely somebody banging, right? Or maybe they're like, where? Okay, 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 okay. Oh, there's no doubt that loud sound is coming from inside the locker. An unknown sound and the fear, but more than that, curiosity. I mean, at least they're alive, because they are making a ruckus. I wanted to see what was inside of it. And when I opened the door of the locker, there was... Oh! Well, okay, she's alive, but... Damn, she got cut up. Makaru. She was in a state where the usual neat and refined look was off. The hair was loose, the blouse was loose, and the glasses were sprawled, and her whole body was bound. That loud sound was made by you? Why are you like this? Who did this? She's like, 
I got tape on my mouth, you idiot. <laughs> I can't answer those questions. Not only that, Makara was bloody. At first I thought she was like Uhara, but when I looked closely, it looked like this blood wasn't coming from her. It was from a bloody cloth that was buried inside the closet. Oh. Okay, okay, I'll release you now, so don't move too much. Makara, what happened here? Before that, give me your right hand. Uh, okay. Come on, shut up and quickly show your right hand. I couldn't tell why, but I pressed my right hand on Makaro's hand without delay. Makaro took a while, wrapping her right hand with my own and observing for something. Shh, it's not you either. Makaro, why did you need my right hand? Nothing you need to know. More importantly, competent. Tell me what time it is and what the current situation is right now. What? She was incarcerated while being bound by someone. And she's asking about the situation if it's, as, if it's it's normal for her. Well, it is her, so I guess it's not so random. Uh, I think it's roughly 8.25 now. We got together for breakfast, but some people are, uh, were unusually late, so we began to look for them. Apparently, your gang is you, Akane Taira, Haruhiko Kobushikawa, oh, Teru Otari, Sasuke Iranami, Mikako Kurokawa, Kanada Inori, and Kakuro Yamaguchi, was it? Yes. Who else is missing? In the group, we were having breakfast, but Inori and Yamaguchi were missing. And we found Uhara on the second floor. Kinjo is still missing. Hmm, a doctor and lawyer. Yeah, fuck, I knew it. They're dead. If I may ask, Makara, what happened to you? I never expected you to be in such a situation. Shut up. Forget everything you saw. It's embarrassing. Yeah, it was definitely my fault. I didn't realize I was going to be targeted so suddenly. You were attacked? By who? Well, you'll find out who it is. The one who dared to touch me. I'll leave them with the greatest regret in their life. Did she, like, bite them or something? She clearly left a mark on their hand. And what's this bloody locker about? This blood isn't from you, right? You don't know? Hey, we don't have the time to be chatting. When I heard the situation from you, I believe this is the very climax moment. I'm going to investigate. Makaru, wait a minute. Damn it, what the hell is going on? Well, at least I've confirmed Makaru's safe, so let's go find the others. A cabinet for miscellaneous art supplies, but now the inside is in a terrible state and covered in blood. Suddenly, as I was looking at this, I felt a chill. The fact that there's blood means that some there was somebody who shed this blood. And it's in the art room, right? Didn't that happen in the... I mean, the actual murder didn't seem to happen in, in the art room, but the art room is related. Didn't that happen in Danganronpa 3 and 1, where, like, somebody... Somebody was involved, like, something happened in an art room. Makaru, hang on a second. What else do you want? I don't hear the luxury to talk to you right now, you hear me? Can't you figure out the situation already? That's not it. I just wanted to know what you were doing last night. Wow, I know how stupid you are, but if you don't feel sorry for your friend's life, then you don't mind running around and talking to me right now? What does that mean? A life? I would... No way. It was uncertain in my voice, but in my mind, I finally understood. Uhara being attacked by someone, Makaru imprisoned, and a bloody locker. The puzzle was completed with all the conditions set to the worst possible outcome. And right after that... Here we go. Somebody found a body. What is this? Somebody's scream? And it's gonna be... Makaru and me are gonna be the other two people to find the body. The body announcement is gonna be made. Maeda, Makaru, I found one. Kurokawa. It's weird she said I found one. As if implying that there's going to be multiple bodies? It seems you encounter some problems. Definitely. Please, help me. To the science lab. You need help? Why? In the science lab? Looks like something happened. Since it's an emergency, I'll help you out. Move. Yes. Kurokawa's complexion didn't look good, and that made me even more anxious. I wonder, what's going on? What's happening in the science lab? Could it be related to the scream earlier? Maeda, you're here. It looks like you found Makaru, too. I want to ask about what happened, about that sound, but for now, we have a bigger issue on our hands. Also, you may have guessed, Kurokawa went to the casino, and I tried to investigate the science lab, but the door wouldn't open. I heard a scream in the science lab while trying to open the door. Maeda, help us here. The four of us joined forces and pushed the door of the science lab, but it didn't budge. It felt different from simply being locked with a padlock. It was as if something was blocking the door. I can't. It's not moving at all. Well, what do we do? Should we go back with the others on the second floor? But we heard a scream in here. Are we going to just leave it at that? We can't just give up. 
Another scream? Who is it? What's going in there? Well, I mean, it sounds like a girl's scream by process of elimination. That's got to be an Ori, right? That sound. Can you hear it? When I listened to Kurokawa's words and focused on the sounds in the science lab, I heard a strange and unusual sound. This is a water sound, isn't it? Water? It sounds like something's flowing when I hear it. Well, what do we do if the door doesn't open? Is it all in vain? Hey, come on. Uh, come here for a minute, people. Makaro pointed and looked closely at the blurry window on the door of the science lab. You stupid fools, the sliding door is blocked with something from the inside. It'll never open. I thought it was weird, but I also thought something was wrong. They blocked it with something. Are you saying the inside is closed? But then it would be even more difficult to open the door. That's not going to happen. As Makaro said that, she raised her elbow to the door of the science lab to break the window. Makaru, are you sure you can do that? Is that not a, is that not considered vandalism? It's okay. The vandalism is caused by force uh, majeure, which involves in the incident. In Monokuma's eyes, that is. I do not understand what that means. I think I know what she means. It's like, this is not vandalism because there's a purpose for it, or this is really- I don't know. As she said that, she put her arm inside the broken window, shoving the thing that was blocking the door. Can't you do something as simple as this? Incompetent. Now it's unlocked. Open it. Like Makara said, the door to the science lab opened with a sound, and the first thing we discovered was... I mean, there were screams, so somebody's still alive in there, right? What is this? Water? When I opened the door to the science lab, a lot of water flowed from the inside. The inside was full of water, and when we entered the room, it was in a watery state so that at least your ankles were submerged. The water in the science lab is... what is going on? When we're trying to check the state of the room... Don't go in. Stay away from the water. Makaro shouted urgently in a serious tone, and I unknowingly stood up away from the water pit on the science lab. Why? This is how they ended up. If you're curious, look inside the science lab. You'll understand what I mean. Makaro's voice sunk like it was subdued. When Makaro, who's usually hard to beat, makes a voice like that, it could only mean she witnessed someone's death. Bum, bum, bum. Being careful not to touch the water pit, quietly, I moved my gaze into the science lab. The scenery that came into my view from there. It was horrifying. It was utter despair. All right. My rights? Come on. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, I knew it. I knew. But her eyes look so creepy. Oh, I don't like that. I think that's the creepiest one just because like her eyes just look rolled back and just like way too big. I don't know if it's just like if it's supposed to look like that, but that's disturbing. Her whole body's tied up and burnt. The body of Kanata Inori, the ultimate surgeon. It was an unbelievable despair. I fucking knew it. I bet we're gonna find the lawyer too, because like I said, third third trial we usually have two two dead people. This is a lie, right? Why is Inori? Why is she? I couldn't accept the scene that was in front of my eyes, but soon I was able to face reality by a sense. It's like a grilled squid, but the smell was even more nauseous. The smell like burning flesh. Blah. Unbelievable. Inori. It felt like a dream, because Inori, who was smiling brightly with us until yesterday and talking to us, became like this. Inori, who was so kind to us. As a doctor, Inori, who worked very hard to take care of everybody's health. It was then that the sound reminded me that this was our reality. A body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time has passed, the class trial will begin. The body discovery announcement. That means there's zero possibility she's alive. So the screaming was not her? Was she just being killed right at that moment? I doubt it. Kanata Inori is dead. Why? Why? Who the hell would do this? Why, you ask? It's only natural. I don't know who yet, but there is a person who wants to get out of here by any means. This is nonsense. Leaving us so suddenly, there wasn't even time to save her? I'm really sorry, Anori. Even so, the body was found. Now why don't we start searching? We need to prepare. Because we still don't know where the lawyer and Kinjo are. Prepare? Search? It's starting again. A class trial. 
That's right. We have to face this terrible despair once again. If we can't identify the culprit who killed Inori, then we'll all face punishment due to the class trial's reckless rules. Did you mention the rest of the people are downstairs? They must have heard the BDA, so they'll come here soon. If you don't want to die, get ready to investigate. Yes, there was no time to even be sad. It was the same when Maki and Tamori died. Once again, we have to overcome sad. We have to overcome sadness. We must overcome despair. However, this despair would not end with this. Wait, C5, it was no ordinary despair, right? Because there's two bodies. There's two bodies. Yep, a body has been discovered. A body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time has passed, the class trial will begin. They'll probably be like, wait, did it, is it glitching? They'll be like, nope, two bodies. Huh? That wasn't that, it, wasn't it a BDA again? No, something's wrong, right? And Ori's body BDA just rang. Why is there another announcement? There's only one thing I can think of. This is quite unprecedented. Well, not really. This happens in every Dankarumpa game. What are you talking about? Kurokawa? I have a bad feeling. We should join the others on the second floor. What happened? I may already know. The funny thing is, like, they didn't want to investigate the third floor, probably because they were afraid, and then they ended up finding a body anyway. But until I check it out with my own eyes, I won't believe it. There's no way. Such a worse situation should never happen. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be the lawyer. There's no uh, the library. That's where Uhara was going, right? Tyra, Atori, a lot of blood. Holy shit, Maeda kun What's going on? What happened to you? It's blood. Tyra and Atori appeared astonished in front of the library as they stood there. The front of the library was covered in blood. The huge amount of it and the bloody locker I saw in the art room. It all started to overlap in my head. Obviously, Inori didn't have any noticeable trauma. The BDA rang twice. Tyra's party hasn't seen Inori's body yet. I'm so appalled. To me, who is desperate to know, Tyra quietly pointed at the library with a finger. Quietly breathing deeply as if, as if, as not to indulge reason in my mind and opening the door to the library. No matter what I see here, I have to be prepared to open the door, and what I saw on the other side was... Without betraying my expectations, the despair in the library greeted me. Ooh. Damn, like it looks like he almost got, like, decapitated. I was like, that's pretty ballsy to, to take down, to take down Yamaguchi, because he's a big boy. Lying in a pool of blood as the body of the ultimate lawyer, Kakaru Yamaguchi, greeted me. I find Inori's actually, like, more disturbing. The, both the fact that the body was burnt, which is, like, one of the worst ways to die, I can imagine. Also, just her eyes. Duh. Maeda. Maeda-kun, wake up. Tyra? I think I lost consciousness for a while. It's because of watching so many shocking scenes back and forth. I was in front of Yamaguchi's dead body in the library, and there was Tyra in between. Well, it's good to see she's kind of like back to being like our sidekick and being like, hey, gotta snap out of it. What's the situation right now? I was worried because you found Yamaguchi's body and you went silent. Sorry. Maeda-kun's party, he went to the third floor to investigate, came back and found Yamaguchi-kun's corpse. Now everybody else went to the infirmary to take care of Uhara. And Kincho-kun. Oh, he got hurt too? Kincho? What's wrong with Kincho? Did you guys find him? Oh, yes, I'll explain what happened. Our investigation on the second floor? Our team found a pit of blood in front of the library while investigating the power room, the training room, etc. I went into the library, but Yamaguchi-kun and Kincho-kun were both covered in blood, and they were both on the floor. Even Kincho was covered with blood? Yes, at first I was surprised. I feared that they both died because of the BDA rank twice, and I thought Kenjo died as well, and he was treated as a corpse count. That's not right. Another BDA rang because we discovered another body found by us. I heard. They were talking about Kanata-chan. It's all too painful to lose so many friends in a single night. But we can't grieve now. I haven't started my investigation yet, but I'll come back to talk about it at the class trial soon. So let's do our best, Mayukun. We don't know who it is, but there's probably one of us who killed two of our friends. I couldn't even look at the body due to the shock of the death of Minori and Yamaguchi. Tyra's eyes seemed full of solid determination, even though it was mixed with sadness. 
Tyra, you've gotten stronger. Eh? It's the same for all of you. You have to overcome the death of our friends. You guys are stronger than me, whereas I'm just shocked and trembling. No, I'm not strong. That's a lie. But what was said to me yesterday from Mikako-chan made me realize what I had to do. I was saved by Ayame-chan in exchange for her life, right? So I vowed no matter what, I wouldn't die here. To be sure to survive here and to repay Ayame-chan's wish. Tyra. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I'll go killing. It means I want to escape with everybody together. I know. Don't worry. However, surprisingly, while talking with Tyra... It seems my worries have calmed down a little. It feels like she could really get out of here someday if she worked together with us. I felt the same way. Yeah, by the way, everybody's late. You said they were treating Uhara and Kinjo. Uhara was fortunate enough it was a light wound, but what about Kinjo? I didn't see him. That's, um, I'm not sure. He was unconscious even after being ta uh, taken into the infirmary. What? It looks like he got a big head wound. Besides, in that case, we had to take the role of Kanada-chan and apply the first aid by ourselves. See, strange that somebody would target- so they targeted Rei, but didn't kill her. They targeted Kenjo, didn't kill him. I was thinking, like, if they want to kill people, like, Kanada, I understand she's little. She probably wouldn't be able to fight back, but, like, to take down the biggest dude, that's a weird person to target. Oh, they're here. Yeah, are you okay now, Maeda? You looked pretty bad. Yeah, somehow. By the way, did you all know about the BDAs? Not only Yamaguchi in the library, but Inori on the third floor. This is too cruel. Poor girl. It's regrettable, but what has already happened is irreversible, so we have no choice in the matter. We have to find the killer in order to live. Where's Kinjo-kun? Uhara-kun seems to be fine now. Kinjo is still in a coma. There's no sign of him waking up, so we gave him first aid and put him on the infirmary bed. I'm worried. But was the first aid effective? I thought it would be difficult because Inori was missing. Well, to be specific, I didn't do anything, and Inori was the one who applied it. I couldn't do it either, so I just organized the supplies and handed him over the first aid kit. Hey, look at that. He's, he's good for something other than just being able to tell us what is and isn't in the uh, antique room. That's surprising, Atori kun You have more talent than we thought you had. I can't tell if that's a compliment or an insult. Well, I've also sold medical products in the first place, so yeah, I have knowledge. But compared to Inori, it's not even close. Two friends have died and we have no choice but to investigate this. Some tried to lighten up the mood than usual to get as much energy as possible. Thanks to that, the situation seemed to improve however little it could. Poo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Everyone else seems to have gathered, so it's okay to show up? It's everyone's idol, Monokuma. Mono Mono. I really want to hit this bear. You finally showed up, Monokuma. Why are you so late? Oh, poo -hoo -hoo, sorry. I tried to show up right away and give it to you, but you guys made things even more complex. You tried to give it? Yes, a body was found, you know. Two of them. The Monokuma file 3-1 should not be given. 3 minus 1? This time, there are two victims, in particular, so I prepared two Monokuma files. 3-1 belongs to Yamaguchi-kun, and 3-2 belongs to Miss Inori. Does that number mean anything? For example, order of death? What? What do you- how do you guess that? It'd be fun to say that, but it's not really in that sense. That number attached to the Monokuma file is based on all the members gathered, and it is only one, because all the members are gathered in the current library. Not all of them be- uh, not all of them, because Super Cop is missing. Kinjo-kun is on a trip to Dreamland, so he can't help, sadly. This toy is making the mood brighter for no reason. It's unfortunate a murder happened in the morning, but that's why it burns more, isn't that right? Now then, I'll be going on ahead to leave the Monokuma file next to the other body. I hope you'll do the best for your sacrificed friends. Poo hoo hoo now wait a minute, even so, don't you think it's too much to say the culprit killed two people? Huh? If a culprit murders this way, there could be many victims in the future. If they commit three or four murders, we'll all die. That sounds like it, but... That's what I want to ask, too. This situation was quite unexpected for me. If slaughter's allowed as a rule, a crazy person could continue to commit serial killings, right? Uh, hmm, that's the point. I never really thought about that. Yo... Er, sorry, you. That's crazy. You're completely irresponsible. Does it really matter? Serial murder is an event that can't be left out of the mystery, right? Blocking such thrilling and heart-pounding events is a sin, too. 
What? That doesn't matter at all. Just being exposed to the horror of murder makes someone crazy enough, but now you can be a serial murderer? All right, all right. Then I'll add to the school rules. It is forbidden to kill another person after an investigation has taken place. And there can be only up to two people that the Blackens can kill. Are we done yet? You should erase the up to two people. It can't be helped because this killer has already killed Yamaguchi-kun and Miss Inori, so two people are fine. Serial killing is so much more fun that it can't be missed. How much do you like serial killings? This means if it were the same per- This means it was the same person who killed Kokuru Yamaguchi and Kanata Inori. What do you mean? What I mean is Criminal A kills Kokuru Yamaguchi and Criminal B kills Kanata Inori. However, looking at Monokuma's words, that possibility disappears. Yes, well, it looks so novel and interesting. Unfortunately, I can't allow that. Even if two cases happen at the same time, if the person who committed the first murder comes out, I will personally stop the second one myself. Well, even if there are two criminals, there wouldn't be just one or two difficulties in the class trial. The overlapping object of murder converges to zero in the first place. Whatever, you'd ask me to do something about it, but what can you do? In the end, this is a game. The people who play it would have to be blown the hell out of it. So this is how it goes. You guys, please do your research. See you at the class trial. Eventually, as usual, Monokuma only said what he needed to say and disappeared. As Monokuma disappeared, there was a moment of silence in the library. Hey, you guys, I heard it earlier. You said uh, Tsurugi Kinjo was in a coma? Yeah, he's on a bed in the infirmary. Oh, she's gonna be like, I gotta go check his hand. So what about kinjo Kun? if he can't wake up for the class trial? I think Monokuma will handle that. It is a bit painful a brain like Kinjo couldn't investigate and proceed to the trial. Idiots, you'll soon come to the realization of you all who depended on the psycho cop. What? We'll show you we can handle it. Is that right? Me and you guys have fundamentally different ways of thinking. As evidence of that, I've already completed the investigation of the library and about the body of Kakuru Yamaguchi. As for you guys, you only went to the infirmary, so what did you do? So what? Are you trying to brag about it? Oh, I'm worried about you getting in my way. A criminal who I don't know who you are. But you think you're pretty intelligent, aren't you? Aiming for Surugi uh, Kinjo? Now then, you better try your best. I'm going to the science lab, so don't disturb me. I guess it would make sense to take out Ray and Kinjo, considering that they're the two smartest people, but, like, why not kill them outright? You know, the two people who would be most likely to be able to, like, figure out who the killer is. Makaro left the library, and we nodded, facing each other. Everyone is the same with the pain of losing two of our friends. However, as always, you have to overcome it. If the criminal is uncovered in the class trial and survives the situation, we won't have to face the same end. It's natural I want to sit down and feel sorry, but I have already experienced it twice. Again, we have to overcome it. Because I have no choice but to. Because it must be done, we have to stay determined. First, let's summarize a basis for this case. This time, unlike the previous two incidents, there are two victims, and the places where the bodies were found were also quite the distance, the library on the second floor, and the science room on the third floor. Overall, there's a need for large-scale investigations going back and forth between the second and third floors. About tools? I don't know yet, but as previous experience, the killer may have produced or procured tools from different places. As Makaru said, Kinjo is very helpful in cases. It's embarrassing. Even if you ask Makaru, I don't think she would answer any questions for us. No, I shouldn't give up just because we don't have Kinjo with us. We may he may wake up soon, and we must do everything we can without Kinjo. This investigation radius has been roughly organized. Then, as always, let's begin with the Monokuma Files. The estimated time of death for the victim, Kakuru Yamaguchi, is about 8.40, found in the library. With a sharp cut from the back of the neck to the uh, uvula, the weapon is presumed to be something sharp with no other visible trauma. Alright, from the back of the neck. So someone just basically just like, slit the throat, done. As usual, although it is a Monokuma file with so little information, if the time of death is 8.40, it was right after we found Inori's body. If so, Inori died before Yamaguchi. As it turns out, Inori was still screaming faintly when we were standing at the door. The science lab. Which proves she was alive until that. Oh, that's horrible. Wait, so and Inori died before Yamaguchi and he died at 8.40pm. So she's been like slowly burning alive all night. That's horrifying. She did not deserve that. This means Inori and Yamaguchi were killed almost simultaneously in real life, or in real time. It makes sense they were murdered. No, hold on. Isn't that a little strange? 
When we opened the door to the science lab, only a large amount of water flowed out of the corridor. There was no other person in it. Remotely murder? I haven't seen Inori's Monokuma file yet, so I won't be able to confirm it for sure, but Yamaguchi's intake is said to be something sharp. And there's a cut deep enough to cut the entire neck. But can this kind of wound be done remotely? But if this is what's called a real-time murder, maybe. There's a possibility someone who was investigating the second floor pretended to find the body after killing Yamaguchi on the spot. Even with this kind of suspicion, I'm so rotten, but it's not a joke, so I have to rule out any kinds of scenarios. It was this kind of wound, and there was no other trauma involved, so it seems this must have been an immediate death. This is what I can infer from the Monokuma file so far. Well, for now, let's search the library and science lab, focusing on the Monokuma file. And if we talk to the others, I might discover something, too. Yamaguchi's corpse stretches loosely on the floor of the library. In contrast to his sloppy body, it was droopy, his pupils were loose, and he felt empty. This is a man's death. I've seen it many times already. Real people dying. Yamaguchi, you were the one who we talked to just yesterday. There's no time to be sad. Even for Yamaguchi, we must find out who made him like this. I've decided to investigate Yamaguchi's body. I felt something hard and cold. According to the Monokuma file, it's said that he was cut off. By sharp, uh, something sharp. Indeed, there was a terrible wound I could see with my eyes. Yamaguchi's neck was completely cut out from the back to the front, but it was surprising it wasn't cut completely. But barely a piece of flesh was left attached. I put up with the nausea that came up and looked at the wound. I've heard the injured area is ravenously torn by something like a knife or tool that's unusually uh, that's usually roughened. But in Yamaguchi's case, it was cut neatly, as if you were cutting paper with a cutter knife. So based on past Daken Ropa games, from what I can remember, when there's been like a double murder, is usually uh, somebody is like working together with another person, uh, like like a um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Not an assistant, but a um, an accomplice. That's the word I'm thinking of. And then that person, like, they work with the accomplice. The accomplice kills somebody. And then the person who's working with the accomplice will kill the accomplice. So I'm thinking in terms of, like, cut really well with a knife. And I hate to say it, but, like, because Kanata is a surgeon, she'd be good with a knife. But if they both died in separate spots around the same time, and it said even that Inori was the one who died first, I think we can roll that out. But somebody who would be good... You could cut with a knife really well. I can't see anymore. I'm so terrible. Poor Yamaguchi. Spilling a lot of blood, like Tomori. Huh? As my stomach was shaking, I suddenly felt uncomfortable. Surely, blood in the library is no joke. It ran from the corridor to the body of Yamaguchi. And it was also protruding from Yamaguchi's body. Yamaguchi's neck doesn't bleed anymore. Oh, so it was like it was dragged? Maybe? Because there was like the thing that was wrapped around uh, Ray. So maybe his body was wrapped up so he was killed somewhere else and was brought into the library. Looking at the Monokuma file, it said that there were no other visible traumas other than neck wound. Then this tremendous amount of blood flows from the neck only. Yamaguchi's time of death was 840. From this wound, immediate death is certain, so even if the wound started bleeding, it is not yet past even an hour. But why is the blood no longer flowing from his throat? Oh, my goodness, wait, 840. Are they saying... Hold on, let me check. Uh, is it 840? It would have been 840... Last night, yeah, not in the morning, because it's like only after 8 now. When I recall the words of Inori, who's no longer here, it seems that after the heart stops, blood circulation also stops. If so, in this case of immediate death, the blood should flow even less. But isn't it too early? In a similar case, when I investigated Tomori's corpse, there was a little blood coming out from her. However, in contrast, Yamaguchi's body looks very dry. It's been- oh! Wait, so it is. They're saying that this happened. Okay, because, yeah, um, that's, what, that's what had me messed up. I thought that, like, they'd gotten killed at 8 last night. Whereas, like, this is morning. So this happened very recently because they did say Inori was, like, screaming. They could hear her screaming. And I was wondering that. I'm like, how is that possible if this happened last night? If she was the one who died first? Okay, this makes this even more confusing. It's been less than an hour since blood is spilled, but the blood already dried up. Like, we have just started the investigation up already. 
confused. I'll have to look over stuff again. I knew something was wrong, but there was no way to think about it anymore because there wasn't Inori or Kinjo who had a professional insight in these moments. So in the span of an hour, apparently, uh, so someone was able to kill him and Kanata and also apparently attack Rei and get her into that locker with the, with the tarp. Inori can't speak to us anymore, but Kinjo's still alive. I should ask him if he wakes up. All right, I'm gonna look this over again. I, yeah, that threw me off so much. Oh, now it's in Korean, shoot, okay. Guess we'll have to wait for the truth bullet. <laughs> Unless. All right, here we go. So 8.40. Yeah, it'd be nice if they said, because it just said 8.40, not a.m. or p.m., just 8.40. What is this blood spot? Right next to me is Yamaguchi, whose blood goes all around the library. It's not that strange that there could be blood spots in the library following this idea, but this blood spot looked kind of different. It's the only one away from Yamaguchi's corpse. Is this blood spot... Hey, Maida, what are you doing sitting on the floor? Oh, Koshikawa, do you know where this bloodstain came from? Oh, right, that's where Kinjo fell. This is the place you found him. Well, when we entered the library, Yamaguchi was there, as you can see, and Kinjo was lying in that position and unconscious. He didn't know because you didn't see Kinjo here. That's right, I heard Kinjo was struck in the head and bleeding, but you mean he spilled this much blood? And unfortunately, so if this happened in the morning, the only other person other than uh, Ray, who was knocked out and put in the locker, and the priest, who was also knocked out apparently last night, was Makaru. Um, but that just seems too easy. I'm starting to think maybe it's the priest. Uh, because, like, Ray was tied up. Um, so, it'd be kind of hard for, for her to, like... I guess she could wrap herself in tape. She could put the tape on her mouth and around her wrist and make it seem like she was just being shoved in the locker. But, I don't know, I have my suspicions about about um, the priest right now. He thought it was a joke. Atori had to disinfect and bandage him, so it's okay for now. But at first I thought he was really dead. Kinjo was lying in this position? Then I can't imagine Kinjo knocked down someone else's head in the back. What and how did the killer attack Kinjo to stun him? And if it's enough to make you bleed this much, why did they stop with only that? Yamaguchi and Inori were the only ones who were killed, even though there was an obvious malice behind it. The fact that a blacken can kill up to two people since it was added later as a rule. The criminal wouldn't know about this. Kinjo wakes up. I should ask him. And it's just the fact that apparently Kinjo, or the um, Uhara, was the only one who was, like, knocked out. Well, we don't know when Makaru got attacked, but... So Kinjo would have been, I imagine, could have been last night too, but probably in the morning. Um, and then Kin, uh, Uhara said that he got knocked out. Did he say like 8 o'clock the other night when he was going to the library? Killing two people at the same time. How heinous is this person, this killer? Of course it's not me. Don't doubt it. Damn it. I can't read what that says. It's probably not important information, at least. I certainly hope it's not. Uh, this is the body of Yamaguchi. The wound is so terrible, I don't think I can look anymore. Oh. Okay, nope. Nothing important. Oh yeah, there's this room as well, right? That we can't open. What's in here? The library you can enter and leave, but this door is locked. Maybe it's a secret passageway from the science lab, and that's how the killer was able to get to two places quickly and kill two people. I don't know. Oh, Maeda. Tyra, what are you doing? Is there something in the hallway? Well, that's not exactly right. The smell of blood is still there, and as I keep looking at the body, I just get sick. Oh, are you okay? You don't have to overdo it. No, everybody's working hard. I can't be the exception. The class trial will start soon. It's alright. Then why don't you answer a few questions for me, Tyra? Oh, you want to ask me something? Yes, when Kurokawa, Uhara, and I went to investigate the third floor, would you tell me what happened on the second floor at that time? Yeah, she should know from this at least. Almost at the same time the BDAs rang, Kinjo fainted. 
It's full of holes that my own eyes didn't see. Oh, okay, I can help with this. That's simple enough. But there's not too much to tell. We, like Maidakun, were shaken when we found the body, and then we started investigating. Okay? I don't know if this has anything to do with the case, Maidakun, but there is something I was a little confused about. Is it okay to say it? Sure, what's that? Kanata-chan, you said you found her in the science lab, right? But I stopped by the science lab just before nighttime yesterday, too. However, at that time, the door was locked. The door to the science lab was locked? Yes, do you think it's related to the case? So did they specify? Did they specify it was like in the morning or are we just going off assumptions? Maybe it did happen last night. Because uh, they just, because I feel like usually they'll say in the uh, Monokuma file, they'll say like, you know, if they have a time, it's like p.m. or a.m. But this time they just said 8.40. It, it doesn't add up because like by the time we started searching, uh, because it was like just after 8 o'clock, right? When we left the dining hall and started looking around. So unless we'd been looking around for like almost an hour. Yeah, the, these... <sighs> I, I'm a little confused about this. It's true, the door didn't open even when we found Adori's body. It was blocked with something like a clasp. Even so, she said the door was almost uh, was already closed before nighttime yesterday. I think I'll take it for reference. Thank you, Tyra. Was I helpful? I'm glad then. By the way, why did you go to the science lab just before nighttime yesterday? Oh, that's... that was because last night I did a... I did a bit of mincemeat in it when I tried to use the scissors on my wrist. Ugh! What a way to describe it. I, like, basically turned my wrist into mincemeat. Were those scissors in the science lab? Yes, I wasn't back... I wasn't sane back then yesterday, so I went to the science lab to pick up the scissors. I understand. I get it now. Thank you, Tyra. Before nighttime yesterday, the science lab was already closed. What does that mean? I'll have to check it out. My thing would be, like, wouldn't the more... Wouldn't the better place to go to get scissors, if you're looking for, like, I don't know, surgical scissors or something, would it go to the, um, the infirmary? But maybe she thought that, like, Inori would be there and she didn't want Inori to see her take the scissors. I don't know. Yuhara, is your body okay? Don't overdo it so much. No, it's not a deep wound, so don't mind it. By the way, have you seen the cell phone? Oh, did it get stolen? Cell phone? You mean Maki's cell phone that you found on the third floor? I thought Yuhara was keeping it. I always kept it in my top pocket because I didn't know I would need it, but now I realize that the phone is gone. It disappeared? When was the last time you checked for the cell phone? It was at least until yesterday night that I recalled having it, but after I fainted, it was gone. Then that means the killer probably took it. That's a sinister premonition, but I'd agree. However, the cell phone doesn't seem important right now because first we have to investigate. I wonder, where did that cell phone go? I inadvertently tried to walk toward the science lab, but I was surprised because the water from it was filling the corridor now. And water still leaking from the science lab? It won't matter if I just go in, but from what Makara warned me before giving me something to be cautious of, I shouldn't step in this water. Hey, incompetent, get out of the way. You're obstructing traffic. Oh, Makara, you came here, but this water... Are you still talking? Would you get out of the way already? But Makara, you said we shouldn't touch the water. Why are you doing this? And if you're going there, wouldn't it be dangerous to enter? It's fine to enter now, so feel free to go in. I've spoken to Monokuma earlier to put it away. Put it away? You'll know when you enter the science lab. Still, no one seems to be turning off the faucet. You guys really don't have a clue, do you? You don't even have Kinjo anymore. That's not very fair. She told us not to step in the water, and then she gets mad at us for not turning off the faucet. Like, come on. Put what away? The faucet? For the love of God, would you look directly with your own two eyes and think in your head at least? It'd be nice if I could tell you everything, huh? There's no point in being so irritating. Well, since Makara said it's safe to walk in the water, I should be confident now. Like Makara said, let's see what happened with my own eyes. <laughs> I like the little sound effect for the water. Oh, even her sprite, the eyes are just like bugged. Oh, it's so disturbing. And it's just because she's so little, too. I, it's like a child. It's like looking at a child. I think that's what makes it even more fucked up. I was seeing Honora's body sinking in the water. It seemed like she was in tears. We're investigating the bodies of some of our dead friends with no time to grieve. However, without investigation, the killer has to be identified. In order to survive the class trial, I must investigate. For now, I decided to look at the body of Inori based on what was written in the Monokuma file. Inori's body was so terrible you couldn't see it with your eyes open, but for now, all of her clothes and skin were burnt. 
Her whole body was fixed with several layers of box tape, and her hands were tied with ropes and hung from the table. Inori, in this state of being unable to move, suffered terrible pain and died. Damn it. I continued to investigate while my swearings reached hollow ears. The tools that were used on Inori. I remember seeing box tapes and ropes in the art room. It seems for whatever reason, the art room is a place related to the incident. Other than that, I can only think of the fact that a faucet where she's tied to is the same table and there's many miscellaneous tools around us, but do they have anything to do with the case? The box tape was tightly attached to her shoulders. Five layers. Even a strong adult man would make it impossible to tear off with her own strength. And also, it must have been even harder for Inori, who is small in size, to move. Is there any reason to tie Inori to this extent? Just the killer's idea? Would that be it? Looking at it that way, Inori has always been in the infirmary after it was opened. Maybe there's a clue in that place, too. You didn't follow me, did you? At least you listened. When you came in here, you know now. The reason why I told you not to touch the water, and why this place became a pool of water? Yeah, but Makaru, I want to ask you something different from this. Do you think I'll answer? I'm serious. I really do have a question. It was when you were in the art room locker. You asked me to show you my hand as soon as you left the locker, right? Why did you do that? I won't answer, however. This is simple safety. No matter what happens, the only thing that li uh, lives on is insurance. It is the minimal precaution that's needed. Insurance? Two of us aren't close enough to explain every phrase to you, am I right? Well, don't worry. The psycho cop won't be able to serve you this time, so you should have an insurance at least. When you guys feel so clueless that you've got no other ways to go about, to go and in the verge of death? I, I don't know what she's saying. This aspect shows up in the trial, then I'll show you my last trump card. So please make sure that doesn't happen. I bet she like bit or scratched or did something to somebody's hand. Makaro began to investigate Inori's body again, leaving only an empty silence in the end. It's the moment that she will no longer speak. At that time, Makaro had asked to give her right, my right hand. I took a look at my right hand, but there wasn't anything there. Is there something only Makaru knows? Oh, this is... Deep in the water pool of the science lab, I saw something I had seen somewhere before. This was Maki's mobile phone. Probably. The cell phone Ohara discovered on the first day when the third floor was opened. I haven't seen any other phones, so Maki's would be the only one left. Why is the cell phone in this place? I looked at the sides, wondering, but as soon as I saw the screen, I noticed the phone was not in normal condition. Wait, why is the screen like this? The phone screen was crumpled with a mixture of purple and pink. The clock was turned into a strange language rather than numbers. And the buttons weren't fit properly. To put it simply in a word, it's broken. Well, it's only natural because it was underwater. I couldn't hide my disappointment, hoping I might be able to fix the phone and get in touch with the outside world later on. Right now, the class trial should be the main priority. Anyway, does this mean that the mobile phone was used as some kind of tool for the incident related to this case? Thinking that way, I fiddled with the phone a little more. I noticed a small alarm indicator at the top of the screen. The alarm was set to 8.30, but now it's already off. Who set this alarm? Besides, at 8.30, this was just before we tried to open the science lab. Oh, was the alarm the sound of someone screaming to make us think that she was still alive? As I pondered, it's very likely the phone was involved in the incident, because it was not only that, there was another tool attached to the phone strap. This is, if I'm not mistaken, this could be... The object connected to the cell phone strap was something I've seen in cartoons and movies. An electric shocker? I think it was also called a stun gun. Why are these dangerous objects at school? No, it seems like they were in the storage of the science lab, but... So, like, was it... It was put there and it submerged in water so it would cause an electric shock? Even when somebody's not there? That's right, now I can understand what Makaro said. Probably because the stun gun was using its power to the water pit. Uh, if I entered that state, there's a high chance we would have gotten electrocuted. But now it seems it's not working. How did she know that, though? She knows a lot. Like, did she just see that stun gun just lying on the ground and she was able to, like, figure out that was a stun gun? I don't know. It was also because Makaro took Monokuma to put it away. More importantly than that is that this is far, uh, this is far from crime scene. According to the Monokuma file, Inori's death was caused by electrocution. Uh, okay, so that's why her body got burned up. Rather than, like, okay. Because I was thinking, it was like, if there's water, how is she burnt? But So it's probably definitive this was the most likely murder weapon. So that's it. Like, tie her up. Let the water run. Uh, put the thing that, and it would kill her while the person doesn't have to be there. So it is kind of like what he said. It's like a remote death. That's how somebody could kill Yamaguchi and Inori around the same time. But what reason does it have to be connected to the phone strap? Also, that's not the only weird thing. If you think about it, the weapon was a stun gun, so it means the killer struck Inori with this object. 
but then contradictions show up, such as the locked room scenario. I can't get away from locked room scenarios. It's like Umineko all over again. <laughs> In the science lab and the crime that was done to Yamaguchi, there was nothing that suggests that the killer could only attack directly to their victim. Maybe making the science lab out of water like this was to prepare an effective crime scene. If electricity goes on while you're immersed in water, you're in a danger zone. The rest to figure out would be how the killer made the water to be energized. What method, what method they used? I'll have to speak about this with the others. An object next to Inori's body. It's the Monokuma file 3-2 brought by that thing. Information about Inori should be written in it. The victim is Kanata Inori. The estimated time of death is around, okay, 8.35. So yeah, she died at 8.35, he died at 8.40. The body was found in the science lab. The cause of death is electric shock. The body's internal organs have been burned through the wet body because of an electric current for a long time while being bound. Terrible. Not a drop of blood was shed, and yet this is the most terrible somebody has done to a friend. Doing this to Inori, who is the smallest and weakest among us? Yeah, to go from this, the weakest person to the strongest person and kill them both. The culprit behind this, it's fair to say, uh, we're distressed to, to doubt another friend against their will, but at this very moment, the undeniable anger that I feel has risen against this perpetrator, who I don't know yet. It's different from Yamaguchi. He was presumed to have been killed by his neck with one blow, but in Ori's case, was a victim that was killed in front of our, our very eyes a few minutes ago with a single wall in between the door of the science lab. I heard her scream. Okay, so it was in the morning? Okay, so they got killed. Wow. How did that happen? Okay, we have to figure where everybody else is then, because, like, so it, if it did happen this morning, so it happened, like, basically right in front of our eyes. At first I was thinking, like, maybe the phone was letting out some sort of, like, a screen to make it see. I don't know. So somebody was able to kill both of the people around the same time. So this was set up as a trap. So this had been set up for a while. She was to go first, and then somebody killed Yamaguchi right after, while people were investigating the second floor? I don't know. This one's very confusing already. I can't help but feel this anger, but it won't make any difference. Since it's just a Monokuma file that gives me information, I'll have to make use of this. But this alone is not enough information. From what can be deduced as of now is the time of death was 8.35. She died five minutes earlier than Yamaguchi. Around that time, we couldn't open the science lab room, and we were just outside the room. There's no problem with the time, at least. But killing two people directly in five minutes? At that time, we were walking between the second and third floors. So if we go back and forth between the areas, you definitely stand out. It's, there's got to be something to do with that, that door in the back of the library that somebody was able to move around. How could the killer murder two people with five minutes for each? Yeah, pretty ballsy to do it in the morning, too. Especially, like, people would have to know that we would be looking for them because we have, like... You know, we're, we're set up, like, we meet in the morning for breakfast. Right? Do you realize how many minutes I wasted on you? Don't talk to me. It will inf interfere with the investigation. Okay, I guess I should probably investigate maybe the faucet, or at least turn the faucet off if I can get to the damn faucet. This is one of the tables in the science lab, and this faucet allows you to throw away medicines or wash your hands during experiments. But now, water's pouring out of the faucet at maximum capacity and it's overflowing. Right, the reason why the science lab was flooded like this was because of the faucet. What a huge waste of water, but no, it's not the time to think about this. I hurriedly turned off the turned off the faucet, and the water stopped flowing. Well, there's no reason for the water to fill anything now. Also, this must have been done by the killer too, but what was the reason? The reason to make the science lab a sea of water. I mean, I think we know why, it was to electrocute Kanata. Okay, I'm assuming this is going to be it. So now we have to go down to the uh, infirmary. Kurokawa, you came down to the first floor. Did you figure out something? <laughs> Kurokawa? She's been acting extra weird lately. Originally, Kurokawa was always to come out without a word, but now it looks like she's cautious. Is it because of the mood? I don't think she's open to talk for now, so I decide to leave it alone. Let's continue investigating. Like, she's the one who fr freaked out and sprinted away once there was that second body announcement. And yeah, she's just been acting strange. 
Kinjo, who's fainted. The others treated him here and put him in the infirmary's bed. There's no way Kinjo will just finish here. When will you wake up? We're in a lot of trouble without you. Oh, that's it? Okay. Uh, shoot, what else do I investigate then? What other things were connected with this? So we checked out the art room. Maybe we go to the antique shop to see if there is anything missing. Maybe talk to uh, Taria about that. Yeah, well, surprisingly enough, he's not here. Maybe the warehouse. Hi, Yuki. The hallway's a water bath, and the art room is full of bloody lockers. Why is everything so bad? It seems the culprit this time planned the crime by going from place to place. That's a very intelligent killer. I wonder if Satsuki kid went so. It's probably not Haru then. <laughs> Haru did arrive a little bit late, but not as late as everybody else. And he was here when... He was with us when all the murders apparently were happening. Against such a mighty opponent? I'm a little worried. Granted, it could be a situation where the murders were happening like they somehow happened before? Before we... Like, not as we were in the dining hall, because that really narrows it down to... Uhara, uh, Ray, Kinjo, and oh, Bikako as well. It's a locker that contained miscellaneous art tools, but now the inside is covered with blood in a terrible condition. Makara was bound like this in this bloody locker. At the time, Makara's arms and legs were tied with tape and her mouth was taped. She was locked from the outside and hit the door of the locker from the inside to try and get out. And the result was the rumbling sound that echoed on the second floor. And the killer did all of this, right? Apparently the culprit trapped her here for some reason. Otherwise, if he did all of this to yourself, it would only create more suspicion. Now, now that I'm thinking about it, with the priest, he said he had been knocked out since last night. And yet nobody, nobody saw him? Like, there were people on the third floor. Right? There was... There was Kinjo, although we didn't get any information from him, and Ray, but nobody mentioned seeing him. The attack on Uharo and Kinjo must have had their reasons as well. But the bigger issue is the bloody locker. If you think about it, Yamaguchi Orinori's body doesn't seem to be related to the art room. However, what does the blood in the locker suggest? No matter who it's from, it's pretty difficult not to miss it. The blood is also dried up. The Nori didn't seem to have any bleeding. Yamaguchi had too much bleeding, but he died not too long ago. And Makara was also tied up here, but she wasn't bleeding. If that's the case, it could be Kinjo's blood. It's my only guess, but Kinjo got hit in the head. If this amount comes from his head, wouldn't he have died? This, bloody, uh, this blood's identity is troublesome in more ways than one. I have no choice but to discuss it at the class trial. Is this Venus? Immensely big. I think it would suit in an art gallery rather than an art room. I think there's something here. Hey, there we go. Sweet. I don't know how I missed that the first time. Killing two people at the same time. How heinous is this person, this killer? Of course it's not me. Okay, so I already talked to him. Did I talk to Haru yet? Damn it, Yamaguchi and Inori were dead. I couldn't even say goodbye. Even so, we have to survive for them. Okay, let's do some research. There may be something on the bookshelf, so leave this place to me. a huge blood trace from Yamaguchi's body to the library door. Was this all Yamaguchi's blood? There's something wrong with this. It's a terrible amount to look at, but I've seen a situation similar to this. It was dark uh, It was dark back then, so I couldn't see well. Tomori shed such a tremendous amount of blood and died. However, there's more from Yamaguchi's in terms of quantity. Well, he's a bigger dude. Because <laughs> this blood leads all the way to the corridor. There's also this in Tomori's case. There were two wounds, one on the neck and the other in the stomach. It was also discovered several hours after death, so it was already bleeding. Less than an hour after death, and no matter how deeply you're injured, could this amount of blood come out of your neck? Not only that, the shape of the blood is also strange. This shape looks as if the body of Yamaguchi was brought into the library from outside. I'll check this out for a bit. Huh? When I slightly lifted Yamaguchi's body and looked at the floor when he was lying down, I immediately felt a sense of discomfort. The corpse was brought from outside. There should be no blood under Yamaguchi's corpse. But that's what I see here. Blood, splot. blood spots are also over Yamaguchi's body. Thanks to that, Yamaguchi's stomach and chest were wet with blood. 
shape of the bleeding itself certainly feels like dragging the corpse to the floor from the outside. If so, there can be no blood left under the corpse like this. No, before that. If there's blood under the body, it means that there was blood here before Yamaguchi fell. Is that right, though? However, Inori didn't really seem to have bleeding, and this blood must be Yamaguchi's. I don't really know, but I noticed something strange about the situation with the blood sea in the library and Yamaguchi's body. I'll mark it down and discuss it with the others at the class trial. Yeah, this is a strange one. Oh my gosh, totally- uh, I was looking around, I'm like, what am I missing here? What is this? A wooden stick-like object was floating on the water-filled science lab floor. Oh, this is- that's right. When the science lab's door didn't open, it was because of this thing that Makara removed to open the door. When we found Inori's body, we had a hard time because the door of the science room could not be opened, but it seemed that the killer used this object to block the door. When I picked it up and checked it up close, it was an ordinary wooden stick, but it was very thick, so it would be natural if the sliding door was blocked with something like this. When I looked at the back of the door, I saw a space where a wooden board could fit in. If it's closed while standing behind the door, then the closed room scenario would naturally be completed. However, what was the reason for the killer to make a closed room? A reason to lock the room. I'll keep it in mind. Huh? I wondered if there might be something here too, and I inadvertently looked at the trash can out and was surprised to find something. I thought it was a tissue paper, but looking closely it looks like a type of cloth. I, look at, I took out the unidentified piece of cloth from the trash and opened it. Let's see. Are these clothes? No, it's not just clothes. This is no way. It was indeed blood-soaked that it was difficult to recognize the original color, but the pure white color that looked at a glance reminded me this was originally a white gown worn by doctors. Oh, shit. Okay, so... Interesting. So... She was... I guess when she was electrocuted, maybe all of, you know, wherever she was uh, stabbed or attacked or wherever where she got all bloody, assuming that she did get attacked or stabbed, maybe the blood just got mixed in with something else. But that's why there was no blood on her, and yet there's so much blood with uh, in the library. This white coat is what Inori was wearing. When I think about it, Inori's body that I saw in the science lab was not wearing a white coat. To think that I would find it in such an unexpected place. No, in fact, it may not be so unexpected. A place where the corpses were found are the science lab and the library. Part of the art room is pretty close to the area of the incident. The locker where Makara was found is the same. This white coat. It seems the blood from the coat has been there for some time since it didn't feel wet at all. The question is, where did the killer use this white coat? For starters, Inori didn't seem to have any bleeding, so maybe it was used while killing Yamaguchi. No, it can't be. It's too dry to be from Yamaguchi's blood. Though, uh, I thought it would be an important clue, so I was able to make a new discovery while investigating every corner of the white coat. In the pocket of the white coat, I found a, crum a crumpled plastic wrap, but when I opened it carefully, I could see it was blood-stained. The locker, library floor, white coat, and this. There was too many blood-related clues. What happened here? When I take a look closely, the plastic wrap had a small round hole in the middle, but the meaning was unknown. Alright. This is, a uh... Man, I thought the last one was a little... Confusing. I guess I'll have to talk about it in the trial. It's possible it was used to prevent blood, but wrapping a plastic for the uh, sake of it, would it have anything to do with the clues we found? Oh, this plaster weapon. Was it originally here? I thought it was against the plaster on the right. I don't, I don't come to the art room often, so I'm not sure about this. I don't know. It's probably just an illusion. The moment I tried to make that judgment and move my steps, I saw the red spot. Oh... The spear. Is this blood? Is that where that little hole was? Like, the the plastic was? I doubt it. Little hole in the little plastic wrap. It wasn't very notable, but there was a circular red dot on the tip of the long blade. I picked up the spear and smelled that spot. A faint but fishy smell. This must be. This is blood. Especially if there's just, like, the little drop. So maybe the plastic wrap with the hole? Maybe it was... Oh. I wonder if it was used to, like, cover... Uh to cover the top of the spear so that there wouldn't get blood on it, but because there was a little hole, that little spot got on it. Then the weapon that killed Yamaguchi was something long and sharp. If it's long, this might fit the murder weapon. After using it to kill Yamaguchi, it was returned back to the same place where it was originally, but the location was different because the killer got mistaken. Maybe it's Haru. He's known for mixing things up. But once again, he was with our group, but maybe he broke away? Except he was with people the whole time. He was with the second group. 
Looking at the blood on it, it must be somehow related to the case. But why is the blood so tiny sized and in a circular splatter? It's gotta be from the plastic wrap. I bet somebody did. They covered it, the sphere, so the blood wouldn't get on it. But they, but they didn't see the little spot, the little hole there. It was so tiny, I almost missed it. Did it make a small bounce from this? No, that would not have caused the blood to splatter in the first place. I don't think I can figure it out yet. Please let this be the final one, please. No? Oh my goodness, we're not done. Okay. A weapon decoration made of plaster. Various weapons are carved, but do you usually design weapons? It seems to be an ornament. Okay, so that's the same thing. Yeah, I really didn't check out the art room very much, did I? So it seems like this is a pretty significant spot for all the goings on. It'd be nice if there was, like, some sort of alert to let us know when, like, okay, we finished exploring this specific room. There's nothing in here anymore. I'm gonna go check up on Kinjo again. Maybe he'll wake up. The refrigerator is a place to store transfusion packs individually stored for each blood type. I was surprised when I opened the refrigerator. No way! We don't have any transfusion packs, so that's why there's so much blood. There were no more than 20 transfusion packs left the last time I saw them. Who used a transfusion pack recently? No, where would you even use a blood transfusion pack? Was it someone to just like throw off the, uh, you know, the amount of blood everywhere? Because it's not like we can do blood tests to see if the blood was actually from Yamaguchi to like throw off where the murders happened. And let's think for a moment. When did the packs disappear? I recall them being stored properly until at least yesterday. And that leaves, was this the killer's doing? But even the culprit is the one. Why did they need to take a transfusion pack? Did they even need fresh blood? Uh, that one got me. I could not find it. I was like, I was like, I've explored all of the rooms that I need to explore. I'm sure I have. I never thought to check the infirmary because the only thing that was there was Kinjo, as far as I was concerned. I think we're almost done now, but the culprit's still a mystery. Maybe more investigations required. Monokuma hasn't called yet, so let's continue. Oh shit! Uh, hi! Kinjo, you're awake! Maeda, are you okay? What about your bandages? It wasn't a thin wound from what I've heard. Now is not the time to bother about that. Maeda, did a murder happen? Yeah, just a little while ago. The class trial will begin soon. Kinjo, I'm glad you woke up. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to relax. I have to see the scene of the case before the trial starts. Maeda, did you do some research? Do you know where the scene is? Yeah, you should start with the library, science lab, the art room, and the infirmary. Okay, thanks. Kinjo, wait a minute. What's wrong? I'm sorry, but like I said before, I don't have much time right now. If I go to the trial without knowing the what uh, what the case is, it's over. Wow, doesn't have a lot of faith in us, does he? I'll talk to you later. But what I'm trying to ask you right now, if it's related to the investigation, it's okay if it's simple, right? So please answer me. How the hell did you pass out? I saw a bloody Yamaguchi. Eh? I saw blood coming from the library, so I went to investigate. Yamaguchi was collapsed on the floor in blood. No matter how much I see corpses, I couldn't hide my surprise. Taking that little pause is their chance. Someone attacked me from behind. I don't have any memories after that. Wait, you're talking about yesterday at nighttime, right? Yeah? What I mean is, Yamaguchi was lying on the floor all bloody since yesterday. Thank you! Thank you! Aha! This is what I've been saying! This is where- then again, then again, Yamaguchi may have just been covered in blood. He didn't say anything about the cut throat, so somebody could have used the transfusion packs to make it look like a murder had happened. But they didn't, yeah, that's right, because like, I was, I kept saying that, I'm like, the time, they're saying it happened at like 8.35, 8.40, but they don't say whether it's a.m. or p.m. Correct. If you walk around the scene right away, you'll notice it. So Yamaguchi, he's dead, right? Yeah. Not only Yamaguchi, Inori also died. What? Inori too? The culprit in this case is not a simple person. They're a heinous mind that killed two people in a single day. This damned asshole. I'll definitely catch this being and punish them. You should go and do some more research for that too. So I'll leave now, Maeda. Interesting, interesting. So the murder may have happened at nighttime. I want to get specifications that it's PM or AM. This is actually good though. Kinjo managed to wake up. Will he be okay? Time is already. Oh, right. What Kinjo said was somewhat weird. Kinjo mentioned he saw Yam uh, Yamaguchi collapse, but Yamaguchi's time of death was around morning hour. Okay, so they're confirming it is morning then. 
So, was he unconscious until the killer showed up again? Bloodied and abandoned until the morning after? Miracles like Tamori don't happen twice. Still, what Kinjo said would be a clue to something, so it's good to put that into notice. The more I investigate something, the more the mystery seems to get deeper. Well, it looks like Kinjo's not going to get much time at all. So he's going into this pretty blind. Hey, you guys, I'm sorry you had to work so hard in your research. However, Mr. Monokuma here is impatient, so why don't we just solve this together? That said, the class trial will now begin. Please gather up at the red carpet door on the first floor. It's like Monokuma intentionally is not giving Kinjo time to investigate because he knows that Kinjo is really good at it. What kind of results will be waiting for us in this trial? Isn't it exciting? Isn't it thrilling? Poo hoo hoo I'll be waiting. Time's up, but what about Kinjo? He just started investigating, but now they're already gathering. It was a big misfortune he was lying down because he passed out. Even without Kinjo's help, we'll have to work together. Even if I think about it, I haven't even figured out the crime scene properly yet. Damn it, this won't make a difference. If I stay here, if I'm late, I'll get punished. Let's just go. Upon entering the entrance of the court, most of the guys were already gathered. maeda you're here. Are you the last one? Then did Kinjo never manage to open his eyes? What do you mean? Kinjo isn't here? What are you talking about? Did Kinjo wake up? I met up with Kinjo just before I got here. Is that true? Thank goodness Kinjo woke up. But I can't see him. It's a matter of language to not have a class trial without properly investigating in his own personality. However, it's time for the meeting, but he's late because he wants to investigate as much as possible. Isn't that so? That's so like Kinjo. No way, but what if Kinjo's the culprit in this case? What is this nonsense deja vu again? Taria, are you saying that because they're late? Think about that and tell me. Why not? It could happen, right? What? Kinjo could be the culprit? Wouldn't it be more fun then? Psycho cop finally goes to murder with their own hands? Ha ha ha. Makaru agrees with my opinion for once, so it wouldn't be strange if the universe exploded. Strangely, it's more scary when Makaru says it. What do you enjoy so much about this, Makaru? Did you forget? In a class trial, you could die. I'd hoped you would change at least a little, but you're still the same as ever. Because I know the killer and the trick even before going to the trial. All that's left is watch your shovel in their grave, right? You already know who the killer is? Who is it? Why should I tell you, idiots? Don't worry, I'll watch you shoveling and struggling. Man, people are not smart about someone should take out Ray or Kinjo. They're the two biggest obstacles. I'm not sure if I should say this, but this is the first time I've ever thought about wanting to hit a woman. By the way, where's Kinjo? He's late. All right, have you all gathered? Good, then let's get started. As always, just take the elevator to go down. The trial's design has been remodeled, so look forward to it. But Kinjo is not here. Huh? Kinjo's not here? Kinjo could was given a special time bonus due to his fainting condition. Is what I want to say, but since he woke up and started investigating the case, it's presumed they're going to participate in the class trial. So that's my mistake. He won't get punished, but I'll bring him shortly in supersonic speed. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Hey, what kind of supersonic speed is this? No, it's just that when I was about to search for him, he was already at the door. Poo hoo hoo. Kinjo Kunshur is obedient. You came and I didn't even need to call you. Shut up and disappear before my eyes already. Kinjo, are you okay? Well, I did as much investigation as possible. Compared to the previous cases, the amount of information is extremely insuffi insufficient, but... No, I asked if you were okay, since you got hurt. Oh, you mean my body? Well, it's fine. I've experienced this much injury, even once or twice with a snatcher. Hey, it's been a long time, hasn't it, Kinjo? I didn't expect to see you bleeding and fainting. I think you're forgetting something. I'm a human being too, so I got caught off guard. Why? Did you get a little fed up with us, Kinjo? Clearly, last time you left the dining room, I thought you were breaking our bonds or something like that. Of course I did, and that still hasn't changed, but in the conditional situation of the class trial, your charges of being preliminary criminals are revoked for the time being. This criminal analogy is that the more manpower there is, the better, and because a murder has occurred, the rest of the criminals other than the criminal of this incident are simply ordinary citizens in this scenario. Komishikawa was making a list of swearing words to give you a double comeback to Kinjo once he woke up. Hey, I never did that. 
Do whatever you like. This is a temporary truce anyways. After the trial, you'll become a preliminary criminal once more. Of course, Akane Tyra is an exception. I'm always thinking of you as a semi-criminal. You're gonna call her a bitch again? One that committed attempted murder, so don't even think you're innocent in the least. Ah, oh, we just got her back. I hope he doesn't get her down again. Ah, oh, this crazy guy starts having seizures again. Tyra, don't bother with what that waste of a man says. When Maki died, we were thoroughly fighting with each other. It's a difficult class trial ever, uh, if we have to work together. Something gave me an odd feeling like this would be an even harder trial than any other I faced. Yeah, I'm notoriously bad at the third class trial, and seeing as how badly I did in the last one, I don't have a lot of high hopes for myself. That's enough talking. Anyways, we're starting the trial, right? Let's get on with it already. Indeed, the first thing we must do is solve what's in front of us. It's not good for everyone to be on edge this early. Yeah, Makaru and Ohara are right. If we do not pass the class trial first, we'll all die. Relationships with the others? Con conflicts with Kinjo? There are many problems ahead. I want to solve them, but first, the biggest one. Let's begin our class trial. If we don't take care of it, nothing will change in the end. Oh, right. I guess I should probably go, huh? I was insane for the most part after Ayame-chan was executed, so I couldn't, I couldn't talk much to those two. I am so sorry, Kanata-chan. I'm really sorry, Yamaguchi-kun. Coming here again and again. Now, just smelling this place seems more disgusting. Damn it. Killing two people at once? This is the worst. It's the worst feeling ever. I investigated as much as I could. The only thing left to do is deduct the results from yours. No way. I think the number of people is a bit shorter, yeah? No? Oh well. The only thing left to do is this, right? When did we all start disappearing like this? Yeah, it seems... I mean, it is very low, but it's pretty crazy. There's something dangerous about this case, and it seems it'll be a more complex trial than before. Be on your guard. What now? Go down already. <laughs> then let's go down. I'll open the door. Like always, the elevator was making a loud noise and went underground. The inside of the elevator was only filled with nine people. It was so quiet during this time. There's also fewer people now. Is it because the relationship between us has worsened than the first and second trials? Me in particular, I tried to not make eye contact with some of them, such as Kinjo or Makaro. I wonder if we really will be able to survive this time. The elevator stopped with a shake that we seem to be getting used to by now. Whoa, this is a surprise. Why are you in front of me, bear thing? Didn't you learn in kindergarten to think about the people who get off an elevator? Monokuma's been doing this once or twice already, though. It's hard to react anymore. Uh, why is he not saying anything? Has he been turned off? Why is Monokuma like this? I'd guess it's a new act. Hey, how long are you planning on doing that? We have to do the class trial. Are you going to move? Something seems different than usual here. Korokawa, touching the thing won't do any good. Huh? What's wrong, Mikako-chan? What is on? What's going on with her? Korokawa was suddenly stunned. At first, she thought Monokuma was pulling a prank, but she noticed the, that the mood was different than usual, and then... Hiya! Eek! Oh, I'm alive. I live. You thought I was dead. When Korokawa touched it, Monokuma suddenly began to make a loud noise. Is that maybe a hint that maybe Yamaguchi wasn't actually dead when Kinjo saw him? Maybe. What the hell are you doing? Are you kidding? Don't do that again. All of a sudden, my rack was stuck. I was surprised too. Rack? No big deal. Did you all come down here in the meantime? Well done. Then shall we start right away? It looks like you're trying to rush something here. By the way, wasn't Kurokawa's scream cute? Let's just move on. Alright, it's time for what everyone's been waiting for. The class trial is back. Well, I of course knew this would happen. Nobody waited for this. I mean, I did. Whatevs. Even if it's not you, there's another person who is waiting for this. Anyway, this will be the third class trial. Your own relationships. Who's been paying attention to the trends of the nerds seems to be in a state of lockdown. 
as if it were breaking. Shut up, I don't care about that. Don't bring stupid stuff and start already. Oh boy, tough attitude I see. I was gonna start anyways. Now then, shall we go with no more words? An extreme trial. The class trial that crosses beyond life and death. The third one. The moment Monokuma said that, I suddenly felt disoriented. Even when you think two victims and two culprits died, four friends were already gone, in addition to the victims of this incident. So a total of six friends have left our group. One, the victim this, uh, one of the victims this time was Inori. After the infirmary was open, she didn't know when somebody would get hurt. So she spent most of her days in that room. A child with the most angelic heart I've known, who worried about us, our health, our happiness. She didn't deserve this, yeah. Inori was that kind of person, through and through. The reason she died was because her whole body became a block of charcoal. Her whole body was tied and unable to move. Someone who's done such a terrible thing is among us. They also killed Yamaguchi and committed ruthless acts, the culprit. Although Yamaguchi was timid and behaved, inappropriately due to his size. At important times, he mediated the situation like a lawyer should, and we laughed together. But then he was killed with a neck wound so severe it was nearly amputated, or maybe decapitated, in cold blood. Yamaguchi was no longer with us. A trial to uncover the killer begins now. A trial in order to live. A lie in order to live. A betrayal in order to live. Elaborating their will to live. For an excuse to kill. Using trust at the risk of life. Risking our lives in this class trial. Alright, there we go guys. So that is going to do it for the investigation part. And uh, I called it. I figured that like... It was going to be characters who, I hate to say, weren't as important to the story. Like, we know that Bakaru and Kinjo are pretty important. And I also figured it was going to probably be somebody from our group. Because it's not weird that, like, you know, the three who are outside of the group didn't come to breakfast. So I, I hate that I was I was right about this. Because I really did like those two characters. Especially Inori. I like Yamaguchi, too. They were just... They did deserve this, man. So this seems like a complicated one. And uh, like I said, I do not have a good track record for the third class trials. And given how badly I did last time and the second one, this is going to be tough. This seems really complicated, but I'm still excited all the same uh, to find out who it is and how it was done. So I hope you guys are excited too. We're going to uh, start the third class trial next week. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. And uh, stay tuned next week for part 10. I guess. Are we already at part 10? All right. Well, yeah. See you guys next time. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons. Emily Hornsby, Lady of Eternity, Revealing Storm, Asborn Kennedy, Jared Fan, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, and Zoran Ether. <laughs>